right. Yep. Okay, so let me do that. Perfect. So this is a very important topic for me. Um, I feel that it's extremely important for our businesses and our lives. Um, it is a topic on mindset. And we hear a lot of successful people talking about mindset and how important it is to get our minds um, set on what it is that we want to do, what we want to obtain, uh, regardless if it's in our personal lives or if it is in our businesses. Um, our mindset is is right is the key to our success, and so um, it really deserves at least fifteen to twenty minutes, if not more, to get in tune with what it is that you see for yourself, what visions you have um, for, you know, like I said, your personal life, for your business. You know, every one of us who have joined Lifestyle, I'm sure had some type of a vision as to where we wanted our business to go, how we wanted to structure our careers. And so that takes time. It takes time. It takes preparation. And that time and preparation starts here in our minds. Would y'all agree with that? Yes. So I, thank you. I, I would love That's to hear from y'all. You know, just chime on in and let's just kind of have a conversation too. Okay. So, um, yeah, so there are tons of books that talk about personal development and George has shared some books. Sean has shared some books. A lot of great people within lifestyle and outside of lifestyle have shared really great books to keep us in tuned with our mindset. So um, that whole mindset thing can be challenging though, right? Because we can get in our own minds and, and just let it just have a field day. And so we have to be intentional and we have to be, um, you know, purposeful to take time to think about what it is that we want to do. So this weekly one page um, uh, document that we have here, this, when someone shared this with me, it really changed me. It changed how I thought about things and it, it made me sit down on a weekly basis before my week actually started and, you know, just to map out and to think about what I wanted my week to look like. And so I tell you what, when I don't do it, I can tell. My week is all over the place. So I can tell when I have not connected with, now everyone has their own beliefs. They believe in whoever they believe in. Um, I believe in God. And so I um, actually sit down and I connect with him and I ask him, what do you want me to do this week? How can I be a blessing to people that you put into my path? What do I need to do? Position me to be in the right place at the right time for the right people, right? And so then I take time and I just think and I meditate and I pray. And so when this weekly one page was um, presented to me, I said, wow, this really lines up on what I do, what I enjoy doing. And so one thing that I think about is what do I want to manifest in my business? You know, um, and I think that this is a great time to, to, you know, just kind of refocus because we are in the last part of um, the year, right? And so we're still in that third quarter, um, but this is like the, second half of the year. So what you did in the first half of the year, um, think about what you've done, what you haven't accomplished and what you want to do and what you want to accomplish for this second half. So what do you want to manifest in your business? I mean, how many people do you want to touch? How many transactions do you want to have? How many listings do you want? How many uh, seminars do you want to hold or host? Um, whatever it is, just think about it and write it down. How many contracts am I committed to for this particular week? Am I committed to two, three, four, one? 
what am I committed to for this week? How many contracts? Whether if it's listing agreements, buyer agreements, or offer to purchase and contracts, what does that look like for your week? And if I don't meet those goals, if I don't get those contracts for this upcoming week, what does that mean for me? What, you know, how does that benefit me or how does it hurt me? You know, a lot of, a lot of us are driven by motivators and those motivators can, it can be painful motivators or it can be pleasurable motivators. So really take the time to think, you know, if I don't make this happen for me, if I don't make this happen for my family, what does that mean? Does that mean that, you know, um, I can't, pay my bills? Does it mean that, you know, um, I can't buy my children whatever it is that they need or want? What does that mean? You know, a lot of times when we really hone in on what, if, if we don't do something that we set our minds to do, if we don't do it, when we hone in on what the effect is going to be, it usually puts us right in gear. Do y'all find that to happen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other real big thing is think about 10 things on a weekly basis, and this should be really easy, on what we can be grateful for. A lot of times we think about all of the things that we don't have, the things that we want, and then we forget about all of the blessings that we have, you know, all of the many things that we need to be grateful for. So many people wake up. And they don't have half the things that we have. You know, people wake up and they don't even have a clear and good mind, you know, and we have good minds. It's a clear mind and we kind of take advantage of it and we don't be thankful for stuff like that, you know, but just be thankful for and the different things that we have, the different blessings that we have within our businesses, within our families. That is huge. You know, because I don't know about you all, but sometimes I can really get in my mind and, and you know, if my week before just kind of didn't go the way I wanted it to go, um, I can get in my mind and like, dang, I really sucked. I didn't do good this week. You know, um, this didn't happen. That didn't happen. So to take the time to really think about those things that did happen, those good things that did happen, those people that you did touch you know, in a good way, those people that you were a blessing to, that helps, you know, it, it really resets your mind. Um, detach. So this is an affirmation. I don't know how I do whatever you put in this blank. I only know that I do and I am fulfilled. I try to say that so many times throughout the day. You know, whatever it is that I'm focusing on, I don't know how I get four listings this month. I only know that I do and I am fulfilled. It just keeps you focused. It keeps you focused on what it is that you said that you wanted to do for this week. So several times a day, I will say that. I don't know how I get four listings this month. I just know that I do or I will and I will be fulfilled. Sean says, I am. <laughs> yes. So now what is that inspired um, spirit-led action that's going to help you to meet that goal? So right now we are doing a challenge in um, the North Carolina offices. And this challenge is, it's a listing challenge. And so um, with this listing challenge, we, we started out with five teams and now we have four teams. And um, the challenge consists of how many calls each team can make per week. The total, so let me, let me back up. It's a 60 day challenge. And um, for the first 30 days, each team is to make a thousand calls or more. The next 30 days, again, a thousand calls or more. And um, the 
uh, members have to come into the office at least twice a week. They can pick whichever days they want to come into the office. It is two hours of calling. And out of those calls, whoever gets the most appointments and, of course, get the most signed listing agreements at the end of the 60 days, they win. And so um, I'm constantly thinking about what or who, what group of people can I call this week that's going to first let me get into the door. Secondly, I could have the potential of writing a listing agreement. So my point with this weekly one page is that we have to be intentional. We have to take time to think about what we want our week to look like, what we need to do to implement those things. And then we have to focus on um, being intentional on making it happen. And a part of doing that is reminding yourself as often as you can every single day of what it is that you are supposed to do. And again, I don't know how I get four listings this month. I only know that I do and I am fulfilled. So I do wanna say I am on my third um, listing agreement for the month. So I have a couple more days to get one more, if not more. So this really does help. And I wanted to share this because it's helped me for years and I'm sure it will help you all as well. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this weekly one page? Is there a place we can print that out? Yes, it's actually in the LIR1 app and um, it's under the weekly one page, but I can definitely share this too um, within our WhatsApp chat. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other comments or any other suggestions or just, I just wanna hear from, from you all. Do you think that this will be beneficial for you and your business, for you and your personal lives? Yeah, yeah I, I, I would think like so. to- I'm oh. sorry. Go no, ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, I think it does work because um, you get organized and, and then you you actually point into your goals every morning and, you know, to keep on doing what you're supposed to do, it, you know, if you have your mindset that you really want to be in this business. And thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Absolutely. Yeah, I just wanted to share, you know, knowing you and getting to work with you intimately, you know, week in and week out, you know, I know that you are a dot your I cross your T type of person and you believe in everything that you said this morning. So it's inspiring for me to to know that you do live this way as well. And it, it certainly focuses me and pushes me to make sure that I've got my days organized and prepared before the day starts. So thank you for sharing this with all of us, T. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I, you know, I'm thankful for, and this is one of my things uh, this morning, I said, I, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to be able to share, you know, this because, um, again, your mindset means everything, you know, and when I do not get in line and in tune, oh God, you can tell. And when weeks go on where I'm just missing it, oh, I can tell, I can tell. So. All right, so now, does anybody have any other um, suggestions, any comments or anything before we move on? Um, I was just gonna make the comment that, um, did you ever hear of Dr. Joe Dispenza? No. He does a ton of, um, he's like, a, I believe a neurologist. I'm not sure if that's exactly the correct title, but he's a doctor that um, he specializes in like mind over matter type of things. Mm -hmm. And he has retreats and he has some books out. Um, let me look at this one. Uh, one is called um, Becoming Supernatural. I haven't read any of the books, but I've listened to him a lot. And um, another is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself and like getting over all those negative thoughts that, you know, you've had throughout your life and stuff. I so highly I highly recommend. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, that's all I was saying. I just highly recommend, but... 
Yeah, I um definitely want to get that one. Breaking your habit because <laughs> my oh my god, what was the full name of that again? Breaking your habit. Breaking the habit of being yourself. The habit of being yourself. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Yeah, mm. and it just talks like how you know we go through things and then it plays with our minds and then we doubt ourselves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would like to add to that. Um, I, listen, I, I don't want to talk too much here, but I would like to add to that. You know, I, I love Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, as a matter of fact, when I was going through a process of really starting to really believe in myself and really working on, you know, the belief system that I can truly have what God said I could. And, and that all the things that I wanted were readily available for me in, in this reality, not at some later future date. I just had to allow and be patient for it to manifest. But one of the things that I heard Dr. Joe say on a YouTube video that I watched, he said, every morning when you wake up, like as soon as you wake up in the morning, your, your brain is in what we call an alpha wave state, okay? You know, it's, it goes in the same wave state when you're going to bed at night. So I'm, I'm sure some of you guys watch TV at night when you fall asleep and you wake up in the morning, you're singing this jingle in your head from a commercial that was on last night and you didn't realize you heard it and you wonder why you're singing that song. It's because your brain was, your subconscious mind was being programmed. Well, he said, if you wake up in the morning, the, the very first thing you do, he said he doesn't even get out of bed until he can feel what comes after the statement. And the statement was, as soon as you open your eyes up and you say your prayer, you get into this, this affirmation, what would it feel like if, right? So for me, the what would it feel like if was, what would it feel like if I woke up and I had a million dollars in my bank account? And, and I would lay in the bed every morning and just imagine what that felt like. You know, I would imagine me looking at my bank account and seeing all those zeros in my account and what it felt like to, to have that money. Well, what I noticed eventually is that I started believing that I could have that money. And then it started to translate in the way that I did my business day to day. And I started to really understand if I'm just taking the steps towards what it is that I've been meditating for and praying for and visualizing, they will start to manifest in my life. OK, and and I see it day in and day out, even partnering with lifestyle. I didn't know that I was manifesting this partnership with lifestyle with George and working with Guzman and all you wonderful people. And it just showed up one day and it was right. And it was a perfect fit and everything matched. And I go back and I look in my journal about the things that I wrote down. OK, I wrote down in 2021 that I would own the largest minority owned real estate firm in the country. And here I am a part of one of the largest minority owned real estate firms in the country today. Knew nothing about lifestyle or how it was going to come. Like you, to your point, Tijuana, how it's going to come. The how doesn't matter. What you, what you need to do is focus on the goal and the thing you've been praying for and the thing you've been working to manifest. And it's not hard. You don't have to push forward or pull for it. You just have to be and do. That's it. And if you do that in a spirit of faith, it will show up. So I just wanted to share that with you guys real quick. So, hey, listen, I love you guys. Thank All right, y'all so have a good one over there. Uh, I'll stop talking. No, that was great. That was right on point. Um, that was excellent. Thank you so much. Did anyone else want to share? I see Guzman. He's oh, yeah. I, you know I was going to say something yeah. here. You this uh, today. I'm happy to hear you're here. Lovely, lovely page. This is incredible stuff it may look like something simple but this is incredible for everybody's daily time management i like the um the affirmations you put on there um let me see i was looking them the pain and pleasures the gratitude those are all great great things for daily work life balance you know um uh, and and i hear hearing sean talk about the affirmations you know, when you wake up in the morning, I don't leave my bathroom without looking at myself every morning and telling myself that we're going to have a phenomenal day today. Today's going to be a great day. And, and I can give you an example. Yesterday, I just wasn't having one of those days. You know, we're all human. I woke up and just don't know. 
you know, in a real, real, real bad, different mood to the point that my wife was like, you're just not yourself today. But before I left, I just had that affirmation in the bathroom, closed the door. And I'm like, you know what? Look at yourself, you know, look, we're going to have a phenomenal day today. Things are going to be better than what they are this morning. And the day ended up great yesterday at the Rock event market. We met a lot of people, learned a lot of stuff. So, yeah, this is good. This is good for accountability. Helps helps a little bit with the decision making as well. And uh, great creativity, great creativity, Tijuana. I appreciate it. And uh, I already printed it out. I have it here. Um, so this is great. I'll be sharing this with my agents as well. Uh, so this is good. This is good for, for you know, getting that mind, uh, getting your mind balanced, your mind right, and uh, getting that day started in a positive way. So, yeah, this was great, Tijuana. It was a pleasure seeing you. And uh, Sean, let, let the lady you. talk. Learn. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. So now we're going to move on to the next document, the million dollar schedule. Sandra, there we go. Thank you, my dear. I love that one. A <laughs> million dollar schedule. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Great, great. All right. So um, the times... I mean, it really depends on the individual. This is just a template. Um, and so, you know, you can plug your own times in there, but this really sets your day for you. Um, when we go to a company where we work for someone, they have our tasks and our responsibilities. They have all of that laid out for us. And so we know that from eight to 10 or whatever have you, we have to work on this. And from this time, from that time, we need to do this. And, you know, 12 to one is lunch and, um, and so on and so on. And so as an entrepreneur, that it's very difficult to stick to a daily schedule, right? Very, very difficult because um, it comes with a high level of discipline, right? And so um, this has been created so that you could have some type of idea as to what you need to be doing every single hour um, of your day. Because when you don't know what you're doing, you're, you're just all over the place and usually nothing gets done, right? So to have some kind of structure and, um, and an organized plan as to what you need to be doing helps our business, right? Even in our personal lives, when we know what we're doing and what we're supposed to be doing, nine times out of 10, we're going to get it done. And then that, you know, that goal is accomplished, right? So from seven to eight, now this is a little late, okay? It's a little late, but you have a lot, I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, I can't get up at four, I can't get up at five, you know, whatever your time is that you get up and that you, you know, work within that your day, make it most effective, okay? Make sure that whatever time you set to do X, that it's done, right? That's the main thing. So from seven to eight, okay, you wake up, you go through your whole mindset, you go through your motivational pieces, like what's motivating you to, to get like, um, you know, read a book or to hear some kind of audibles, um, something that stimulates your mind, right? And that's going to motivate you. You pray, you meditate, and then you visualize. Like Sean said, before he gets out of the bed, he thinks about that $1 million that he will have in his bank account. And notice I said he will have it because it's going to come. Just how he said, I thought about me having the largest minority firm. I didn't know how it was going to happen. It's just something that I thought about. I visualized that. I internalized that. So we know that in no time, if he doesn't already have it, he's going to have a million dollars in his account, in his bank account, right? So visualize what it is that you want. And then journal. He talked about that, writing it down. It's so phenomenal when you write something down and then you come back to him and be like, oh my God, I said, just like he said, back in whatever year it was, 
I said, I wrote it down that I was going to have X and here it came to pass. So journaling means that, oh God, that just, that's a life changer in itself to see where you have come, you know, how far you have come, what you thought about. It could be years before, you know, years ago, you thought about something and now it's come into fruition, you know? So just writing it down is a whole lot and exercising. Not only exercising our minds, but physically, we want to be physically fit. This is a lot. You know, real estate is a lot. You know, um, running around, showing properties and going on your inspections. And it's a lot. So we want to make sure that we're physically fit as well. So we definitely need to do a lot some time towards, you know, for exercising. Will y'all agree with that? Mm hmm Definitely. Um, yeah, absolutely. You want to eat right, you want to get your rest, and you want to exercise. So after you do that, um, of course, you bathe so that you can get to the office and prepare for your money-generating activities, right? And so um, you're a lot time for travel or if you're working from home, you know, put all of that in perspective, you know, um, because a lot of times we don't think about the travel time. Right. And so then when we get to the office, sometimes we get thrown off. Right. And it's like, oh, man, I'm behind time. Well, you're not really behind time. You just didn't you didn't factor in that you have travel time. So now your money generating activities, what are those money generating activities? What are those activities that are going to actually drive money to your business? So making phone calls, door knocking. Um, you know, um, seminars, whatever it is where you can get in front of people and talk to them about who you are and what you have to offer them. All right. So you notice 845 to 1030, that is the bulk of your business. If you spend at least two hours every single day prospecting, a new business, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you will see a huge difference in your business. Two hours a day. That's all you need. Two hours a day. Remember that. Only two hours. Prospecting on new business. There's a time for lead following up, writing notes, sending out packages, and sending out text messages. There's a time slot for that. So when you're doing your money generating activities, that should be non-negotiable time. So at, when those two hours are set, you shouldn't take any phone calls. You shouldn't be checking any emails, um, speaking to your agents, none of that. That is dedicated, non-negotiable time for you to lead, generate, to build your business. Okay? Um, how many people really stick to that? None of us really, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the hardest thing, but I promise you that's something that we really need to do, right? And so after that, like I said, that's when then you do your following up. You know, th there's no emergencies in real estate, although we think it is, but there's no emergencies in real estate. And guess what? We are in control of our own schedule. We're in control of it. And we have to help our clients and our agents, um, our fellow agents, and if we're partners or bigs or whatever have you, we have to help our agents and clients and our family um, to understand how we work, what we need to be doing, when we need to be doing it, you know? And it's just simple communication. You can leave it on your voicemail. You can verbally tell your agents or your, your partners or whomever, hey, at this time, these two hours are designated for me to prospect. You know, you can also let your clients know, well, between 9 and 11, this is when I'm prospecting for, for more business, especially if it's a listing. Hey, this is my designated time when I'm actually circle prospecting for your home so that I can sell your house. I'm calling your neighbors. I'm calling, you know, people to let them know that we have your house listed and, and tell them about your house. You know, they will respect that. They will respect that. 
after you do your lead following up and your text messages and such, then you return your calls. You check your Facebook, your social media. You know, you work on any type of paperwork. So as you see, every single thing that we do in our business has a time slot. It has a specific time when we focus on that. Now, is that going to happen every single day? Absolutely not. Because, you know, you have closings, you have inspections or whatever have you. But the key is as often as you can stick to your schedule, it will net you a million dollars. It will net you a million dollars. Your appointments, your appointments, um, try to make your appointments at the end of the day. You know, especially we have a lot of people that are full-time employees, you know, and a lot of times that's when they can see properties in the evenings, you know. But again, as long as you have time allotted for specific tasks, it's going to help your business. And you cannot forget about quality time for yourself and your family. We have to have um, a great balance, work-life balance. And that's what Guzman was um, talking about. A lot of times we just get so caught up in our business and we forget about our family, our loved ones, you know, and they're feeling slighted. They're feeling like, you know, they don't matter. And we don't want that. We don't want that because to have healthy family relationships will help you to have a healthy work relationship as well. OK, and this schedule is going to help us to balance that. We have to take time for ourselves, whatever that means. Us ladies, you know, that means it's, we have to get our hair done, our nail, whatever it is for the men, haircuts, whatever you want to. Um, I know Michael, he likes to fish, you know, that's his time, his downtime when he can enjoy himself. You know, so that balance means a lot. That quality time with our loved ones means a lot. And so you have to allot time for that. Does anybody have any questions based on this schedule? Do you think that it's easy to implement? Have you already been implementing it? I'm just getting started, but I'm going to try to stay on a schedule, mm -hmm. but I might have to go back to work full time. So that's going to make it more difficult. But mm -hmm. And even working full time, you can still be on a schedule. I When the market has shifted, um, I worked at Wells Fargo for two years and my clients never even knew it. They had no idea. When I tell you I had this down to a science, I did. I worked from um, eight to four and um, I, during my lunchtime, that's when I returned all of my calls. And after I got off is when I showed my properties, you know, um, in the morning time, whatever I needed to do for that client to prepare for that day, I did that. It was early in the morning, but I still had it done, you know, so it's just being intentional and being very um, organized and disciplined. And at the end of the day, you feel so accomplished. You feel so good. It's like, oh my God, I got this, this, that, and the next done. Oh my God, I'm ready for the next day. When you're all over the place, you tend to feel just that unaccomplished and all over the place. I didn't get anything done. I don't know what I did today. That is a horrible feeling. You know, I know for me it is. Yes, definitely. Mm hmm so having some structure in your business, knowing first what you what you are trying to accomplish for that week and then structuring it accordingly will definitely bless your business. It will definitely bless your business. And here it says, do this Monday through Thursday every week and you will never have to worry about where your consistent income is going to come from. That is a true statement. Again, Monday through Thursday. So now if you want to add Friday and Saturday, oh my gosh. But just try sticking to it for four days. Thank you. Those tips are helpful. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Does anybody have, have anything else to share? 
Does anyone actually have a schedule, a plan that they stick to? No, I do. Okay, I do every morning. Yeah, the night before, I actually I write everything that I need to do the next day, mm -hmm. my appointments, my meetings, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also block out an hour in the morning. I've actually been jumping out with Claudia uh, from nine thirty to ten thirty, um, and it's really a silent room. Uh, there's really not much. We 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 discuss things uh, pretty quick or uh, or early in the in the few minutes, and then the camera's just on. We're making our calls, and since I've been doing that for the last few weeks, it's changed. It's definitely changed my morning. Um, typically, I got a ton of things going on in the morning. The brokerage, the office, the states. You know, I got my my hands in a, in in a few things. So uh, staying organized is extremely important for me, and 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 that's helped. Uh, that's helped a lot. I'm also a, a, a very late sleeper and I've, I've been working on, on getting to that bed no later than, you know, midnight, uh, 1230, just so I can have that better energy in the morning. But I'm a, I'm a night owl. I tend to stay up late. You've seen some of my emails, one, two in the morning. Okay. Uh, it's just my schedule. I have kind of had my whole life. Uh, but I've realized that I'm I'm trying my best to get to bed, bed early. But yeah, I, I try to block out in the morning. I try to make a list of things that I can get out. And uh, that's helped me. Uh, what's that saying? That's helped me bite, you know, take the bite the frog in the head first. Like, you know, start start get the heaviest things out of the way first, the most the most annoying things out of the way, and it kind of clears my day instead of like, oh, let me do this first because it's the easiest thing, and then I'll leave to one of things for later. You know, then then it gets worse because the day starts to add up on you. Um, but yeah, it's super important, guys. It's super important that in this business you stay organized and 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 create a daily sheet. Of, of what you want to do and try to break out a time where you're just going to focus on that and that alone. So good points there, T. Yeah, that's true. And um, the more you do it, the more it's going to become a habit. And when you're off track, you're going to know it. You're going yeah, to fight. Yeah, I feel it already. That on track. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so so oh, I'm sorry. I no, 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 go ahead. Um, Des and I actually... Um, were with you in person when you did this presentation the first time mm -hmm. last year, around this time last year. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we actually blocked out our calendar. So when we're sending our links for appointments, people can't set any type of um, appointment with us during those times. So the, this has been very, very, very helpful. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but I really hope you do your farming training for everybody too. Oh, because your farming training is it? It would be like a part two to the one that is currently on YouTube. What you cover is completely different. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right. Well, I'll I'll get on the calendar for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? I love how you said that um, you block out. So you do you use Calendly? Yeah. So um, what we did was on our Google calendar for 12 months, we blocked out all of the time that's like on this form that you created that mm -hmm. you shared with us. And we block out that time to make sure that we're unless it's like an emergency with the kids or a family member then we do our best to adhere to it. And people can't book any time with us during those block times. So it's very helpful. And then every night we have it sent to us so that we know for the day, the next day, exactly what we're doing. Just like the last um, realtor just mentioned. So the mm -hmm. night before we know exactly what we're doing the next day. So the whole day is like mapped out for us. That's good. That's good. All right. Does anyone else have anything that they want to share? Any questions that you may have? Hi. Um. So I've attempted to do the time blocking and it's been a real struggle because I, I tried to do something similar to what you have here, mm -hmm. but there's always a client that isn't available, you know, within the afternoon hours and they would need a morning appointment. And it seems like once I go ahead and 
make that accommodation because of course in the real estate world <laughs> different things happen at different times mm -hmm. um it's hard to try to get back on track it just feels like it's catch up trying to play catch up and it it'll just throw me off for like the rest of the week if there's any type of modification to the schedule and you know i also try to attend as many training sessions as possible. And even with lifestyle, we have an 8.30 session, sometimes a 9.30 session. We have a one o'clock session um, sometimes, you know, this past month. And this month has been priceless because all of you guys have dedicated your time away from your business to try to give us some tips. So for this month, I've, I've been trying to catch every class because if not, if I try to watch it later on, even though the links are sent, that'll throw my schedule off even more. So do you have like any recommendations on how I could better um, organize myself for when I do have like the slightest adjustment to my schedule so I'm not just completely lost for the remainder of the day? Mm -hmm. So I would, um at the top of the week, I would plan out as much as I possibly can. Um, keeping in mind, because we are in real estate, yes, things come up, but a lot of those things we can control. So for instance, the um, client that cannot meet in the evenings, they can only meet um, during the daytime and give me a time that they usually would like to meet. I try for the morning appointments, I try to schedule it at 11. Mm -hmm. And but okay, sometimes and that doesn't work for them, but on for the majority of the time, I, I do try to do it um, 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And that's perfect because you, you have already done the biggest piece of what you're supposed to be doing to drive, uh, drive business to you, and that's generating leads, right? And so, your lead gen, I like lead gen to be at the top of the morning, right? That's just me though, because I'm a morning person. Some people prefer to do it in the evenings. They feel like they get more um, people to answer or whatever have you. So you go, when you're doing your legion, you go according to um, what makes sense to you, okay? Some people are not morning people, you know? So you're not gonna get that energy. You don't have that energy that you need to, you know, to conduct yourself the way you need to. The evenings work best for you, right? So my advice to you is at the beginning of the week, plan out as much as you possibly can. That client that you have to meet, you know, early on and not in the evening, I'm sure that doesn't happen often. So those couple of days that that does happen, then you just plan around it. You have to be intentional. So if I know that, you know, um, Ms. Smith only has from 11 to one that I can show her property and it's, you know, Wednesday and Thursday, well, then I know that I have to adjust my schedule for Wednesday and Thursday. You know what I'm saying? I have to make those adjustments. And so you just adjust it accordingly. You try not to. So now after you finish with Ms. Smith, You've already done your legion, right? Um, once you finish with her, then, okay, I'm going to go back to the office. Hopefully she found a house that she wants to write an offer on. So I'm going to go back to the office. I'm going to do my comps. I'm going to hopefully write up an, you know, an offer or whatever have you. After I've done that, then I'm going to go ahead and follow up on you know, my emails and my Facebook. You see what I'm saying? You just make those necessary adjustments. And the other thing that you have to do is you have to say to yourself, my schedule has to be slightly altered, but I got this. I'm still going to complete my this. I'm still going to complete my that. You know, you just have to talk to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't let it, overtake you. Oh my God, my schedule is, is thrown off because I have this that came up. I have that to come. Just step back for a couple of minutes and regroup. This has come up, but I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to go ahead 
and complete the rest of my task. Does that help? Yes, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We just have to talk to ourselves. Sometimes I'm I'm talking to myself and my husband is looking at me. He's gotten used to it now, but he used to look at me and be like, well, you all right there? Yeah, I'm all right. I just got to, I got to tell myself what I need to do here. I got to hear me say it. You know what I'm saying? Do yeah. you think it would, I'm sorry, do you think it would be a good idea to take those, because I'm really bad about staying on schedule myself, um, but to take those things that you had to put off and just like, kind of like, okay, I missed this, this, and this. So I'm going to move that to another time during the day. And just like, sort of like, just reschedule those things. So you still have them on your schedule, maybe at a later day or later time that day. Absolutely. Let's make an adjustment. Yep. Yeah. Because things do come up in real estate. You know, especially with new construction, we cannot control those closing dates. We cannot control, you know, those final walks. You know what I mean? We can't. So you just, and the, the what helps is knowing what you are supposed to be doing for the week. Getting ahead of it. Then you can definitely make those changes very easily. All right, well, I know on Thursday I have this going on, so I have to reorganize. You know? Mm-hmm. But being proactive, a lot of times we'll we'll jump in, excuse me, we'll jump into the day that day. You know what I mean? But no, if we can, if right. we can plan at the top of the week what we want our week to look like, it I promise you, it's not going to throw you off as much. It's not going to throw you off as much when those little things come up. You know? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No? All right. Well, I thank you. We did a lot today, Tawana. I, I appreciate a lot. Oh, thank you, Guzman. I thank you for your input. Yes, I thank all of y'all for um, jumping on with me this morning. I hope that this has helped. Um, if there's anything that I can do, um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if there's anything that I can do, just let me know. Um, yeah, just reach out to me. I will definitely make sure that everyone has this, excuse me, um, so that you could, you know, have it and make any adjustments that you need. Um, it's a great guide. It's helped me and a lot of other people and I, and I wanted to help you too. So Thank y'all so much for this opportunity. Uh, many blessings to y'all. You know? All right. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss T. I really appreciate it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people got on here. I mean, got a lot of information from you on here. I already printed my docs, so I'm going to start using them. And like I mentioned to you, I'll take the time and share with the agents as well in the office. So I appreciate you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Well, everyone, um, have a blessed day. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome.